Three, two, one, go. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another free tutorial. Um, this one is a uh, free tutorial brought to you by my Skillshare class. So if you want to support, make sure to check me out on Skillshare. I have a bunch of 3D Nomad Scope classes and I have one called Kawaii Workshop where I make a lot of really cute designs. So I just wanted to do this little character for free here on YouTube. So let's get started. Okay, so now we're in Nomad Sculpt. We have our default sphere here. And the first thing we want to do is bring our photo in. So I'm going to go to here, reference image. There's the desk, import, photos. And we'll bring in, I'm going to do all these characters eventually. So then we'll add this little guy here. Let's go to transform. And that way we can adjust the size, and I think that's pretty good. And just to note, when I start a new project, I'm in orthographic instead of perspective. That's very important. And I am, uh, I'm using Metcap instead of LitPBR, because I just like to sculpt in Metcap. And one other thing to note, is this is my environment that I use. This one here, it's available on my Gumroad, the link's below, if you wanna use the same environment because that will affect how the light looks on our model. And I think that's it. Oh, also make sure you check out my rounded edge tool video um, because I'm gonna, I might not use it that much in this, I probably will use it in this video, so it's important to make the rounded edge tool. So make sure to check out the video for that unless you already have it. So let's go back into Metcap, and now we can get started. So when I think about this character, uh, pretty simple, I think of sphere, sphere, uh, maybe four little spheres for the arms, spheres for the ears, and then maybe a cylinder, or a couple cylinders for the little tail thingy. This cute little tail. So sometimes people line it up with the drawing. I don't really do that, I just do it by feel. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we can use symmetry because when we move something on this side we want it to move on the other side so that looks good so far and one thing that i like to do is go to symmetry and turn on the line that way i can see my symmetry line okay so let's start by uh scope uh, modeling his head which is fairly round it's a little it's not exactly ovular but it's it's pretty round, so let's make it a little bit bigger, and then I'll stretch it out like this a little bit. We can go ahead and validate it. So now what I want to do is, I'm actually going to turn on not only the, the X symmetry, but also the Z symmetry, because when I do things on the front, I want them to happen to the back as well. So now we'll use our Move tool, and we just want to flatten out the sides a little bit. So I'm just going to sort of Excuse my throat. So I'm just going to bring out the sides a bit and just sort of make it this kind of the shape that his head is. So I think this is pretty good. So for the top of the head, I'm actually going to use drag uh, because drag will move things a little bit more um, def definitively than the move tool. The move sort of the move tool sort of moves everything. Drag, you can get a little bit of, a, of better details in whatever you're moving. So it looks like something like this is actually pretty good. Yeah, I think that's nice. So let's turn it on its side and see what we have. It's a little flat. So I'm going to turn off the Z axis. So we just have left and right, and I'm going to use the Move tool. And I just want to give him a little bit of skull, you know, just give him, just bring out the back of his head a little bit. So something like this, and now he has a little bit of the back of a skull too. I'll tap front, and I think that's a good start to our sculpt. So now let's use some spheres to make the ears. I'm rhyming now. So this, let's rename it to head. 
and then we add another sphere and we can rename this to uh, ears. So we'll bring it up, mirror, we'll spread them apart, just shrink them a little bit. And now I'm going to turn it to the side so I can sort of flatten them up a little bit. And that looks about the, the right height. So now I'm just going to bring them down into the head and we probably don't need to do too much with these. Uh, but we will sort of, this is a little straighter than this side. So I'm going to validate them. And then I'll use move. Let's see how move does. We might have to use drag, but we'll see. So move does a pretty good job. I'm going to use drag just to sort of straighten out this side. So we can match with the drawing. This side is nice and round. You can use move if you want to sort of just make it a little more plump. I think that looks pretty good. So I am going to move these using the gizmo. I'm going to slide them back on his head or her head. And I think that's pretty good. I don't think I need to do too much more with these ears. So I do want to add this little bit here. And there's a few ways to do it. You can either kind of engrave this little piece. Or um, what I think we'll do is I'm going to select both of these. And I'm going to validate them and hit join children. I'm going to relabel it ears. So now I'll just clone it. And I'll rename it ear small. So I'll drag it up and then I'll just shrink the whole thing. Oops. So now let's use symmetry. Once we tap symmetry, then we can, this will react the same way that symmetry does. And we'll just kind of rotate it, move it up, we'll rotate it. And we just want to put it right in front of, we'll rotate it out a little bit. And we just want to put it right in front of the ears. So maybe something like that. Let's make it a little smaller like so. And if you get frustrated using the gizmo, uh, you can actually use the move tool as well. Just make it a little bit smaller. And you can actually just move these out until they're right where you want them. So I think something like that is cute. So one thing I noticed, I made the head, uh, the ears are a little big, but I, I really like the way that they look. So instead of changing the ears, I actually need to stretch the head out because in the drawing the ears is sort of aligned with the side of the head so I think stretching the head out uh, works a little bit better and yeah I like that okay so now we can scale back a little bit and we can do uh, this body so it's not the easiest shape to make but there's a really fun way that we can make uh, this body shape fairly easily using the lathe tool So once we tap on the lathe tool and let's use curve and you see this little line, you don't really have to line it up, but I think it's easier for me to line it up with this, uh, this symmetry top front. Oops. I want it a little smaller. There we go. So that's close enough. Um, so essentially with the lathe tool, we're going to draw in this shape. So we'll come out from here and then we'll draw around and we'll make his little round body. So let's start up here because you're not going to see it when it's behind the head and we can always change it later. So now I'm going to come out. So I'm going to make this little curve like this and then I'm going to come out again and make his little round body like this. So you want to do a shape like this and then you let it go and you have this funny looking shape. But the good part about this is now we can edit this to really get this body shape. So let's tap spline. That's gonna make it nice and round. 
And now we can edit each one of these little dots. Some of these we can get rid of, we don't need this many. And to get rid of them, just drag them into each other. But now you see we have, uh, we have this nice curve. It's just not in the right, it's, it's a little too thin. So let's just turn it sideways and use our gizmo and let's just push it back. So it's roughly about where we want it. So I would say somewhere about here is probably where we want it. Okay, so this is all rounded at the bottom. So let's get rid of some of these. Let's get rid of the gizmo first. Okay, so we can just move these around and just make them nice and round. Okay, and this neck, I'm gonna extend these out a little bit to make the neck a little bit wider because he actually has a fairly wide neck. There you go, it's starting to look a little bit better. The lathe tool is very, very useful. And this is actually the first time I'm using it uh, like this. But it kind of just made sense to me. So I think this looks uh, pretty good. I think it's a pretty good match. So we can kind of fix that later. So let's validate this. And now we have a decent um, body shape that's pretty close to what we were looking for. So I'm gonna go pivot, reset, pivot, and I'm gonna shrink it a little bit and move it up a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. And it actually matches up well on the back as well. And don't forget, you can still use move as long as your symmetry's on, as long as symmetry's on here, you can still use move to sort of adjust it um, a little bit the way that you need. Probably should have put the other. Um... The other symmetry on, but that's OK. I'm not too worried about the front and back symmetry. I just want this front symmetry to look pretty good. But so far, I'm happy with this. So we have to add the little legs and the little feeties. And we're going to use uh, spheres for those. Let's rename the lathe body. All right, so now let's make his little paws, front paws. And for those, we'll just use spheres. So we'll bring the spheres forward. And let's mirror them. And then we want to make them, we want to try to get this size right. So they're fairly small. We can separate them. And then I want to stretch them out too. So they're kind of like that, but they're very, very small. Sometimes I tend to make paws bigger than they need to be. So I'm just going to flatten them up. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll separate them a little bit more. Okay, so let's move these back to the body. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna angle them a little bit so that they're sort of resting on his little belly. So I think that's pretty good. Make them a little bigger. I think that's pretty good. Might have to make the body a little smaller too. Yeah, that looks a bit better. So I always tend to make things a little too big. So back to the paws, I'm gonna make them a little smaller. 
and you can see that they're sort of facing each other a little bit, so I'm going to angle them a little bit this way as well. And a little bit like this, so that they're out. Okay. So I think that works. And I want to add another sphere behind them, so let's validate these, and we can actually clone so I'm just going to clone this sphere, and then we can sort of flip it. We can sort of flip it and then push it back, and sort of get it so it looks like it's his little arm. Stretch it out a little bit this way. Let's make it a little shorter. And this part is a, is a little tricky, so you, you essentially just want to add another sphere. It might be easier just to bring down a new sphere. And you just want to add it right behind, so it kind of looks like, you know, it's just one part, one arm, and that the paws are sort of coming out like this. So it's really just two spheres. I think that looks pretty cute. Okay, and you can actually, I might drag these paws down a little bit. Turn on symmetry. Maybe I might do something like that. Make them a tad bit smaller. Okay, I think something like that is pretty cute. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and validate these, join children. So now we have the arms. I know they're kind of front paws, but. So we have the arms, I think they look pretty good. Let's add another sphere for the feeties. We'll bring them down, forward, like so. Let's use the mirror. We'll kind of place them generally where we want them to go. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So now let's stretch them out a little bit. And let's flatten them a little bit. So maybe something like this. Let's bring them up a little bit. So now I want to use, let's validate them, and I want to use drag. And I'm going to put drag on about... 185 or so might have to change that but I think 185 might work so he has a little bend in them so I'm going to push down on the very back side so I'm going to push down like this to give us something like that and now I'm going to take the gizmo and I want to spin this sort of like that I think that actually looks pretty good. Let's bring it up. And I think that's actually a good uh, shape. It's very simple. It's very hard. It's very easy to kind of get lost in the weeds and make things more complicated than they need to be. Whereas I'm fine with these. I can make the little cuts and I think it will look like a paw just fine. Okay, so once you're happy with these shapes, um, and in full disclosure, I do always go back and tweak this. Sometimes I think it's a little bigger, a little smaller. I'll probably continue to do that um, because I just, you know, it's hard for me to not continue to work on things. But essentially, you just want the body to be smaller than the head and you want the paws to be small and cute. And so just keep in mind that there's a little bit of space be between the chin. There's a little bit of space between the bottom and the, the paws and the bottom. Just keep little things like that in mind. So when it comes to the eyes, so this part is kind of tricky. One thing you can do is sort of uh, sort of sketch it out first by using crease. I use crease really small. And I make sure I tap the front so I know I'm directly in the front. The symmetry's on. We have our symmetry line. So anything we do over here will be over there. So 
you have to keep in mind that there's a decent amount of space in the middle. So you want to start in the middle of the head and just do your first line here. There's a nice round curve on top. And just note the space from the eye to the side of the head. So you don't want to go too far over. And then there's a sort of a soft rounded bottom like this. And then it goes back into this straight line coming up. So something like that. So you can delete this. You can undo it until you're happy with it, until it looks good. And then once you have that, just use clay. Uh, use sub so it'll subtract. You can keep your clay tool fairly small. And then just use clay to sort of whittle away all of the mesh that's inside the lines that you just made. So you can just sort of use that as a template. So the main thing that I'm really paying attention to is this space in the middle because he has a, a wide bridge here. You want to make sure that the top is nice and rounded like this. And then it's a little bit flat on the side. And then it's sort of a soft rounded bottom. So we'll just make sure that that's nice and round at the bottom. Okay. So I think that's a pretty good start. So once you get to here, there are some other things you can do. Like I feel like his eyes are, are very big. So I want to widen these out some. So I can just use drag. You can use move as well, but I'll use drag. And you can just sort of drag these. to sort of make it a little bit bigger and just to sort of give it the final touches that it's hard to do with um, with clay. You can make it really small too if you want to really go in and get some of these, these details like the flat side. So drag is really good for that. So this is exactly what we want. Um, this is looking good so far. So now we can, we might be able to take our uh, rounded edge brush and round this out, but it might not be worth it to do that until we, uh, until we get the body and get all the other shapes in place. We still have to do the little tail. So we just have to decide if we want to connect that as well. That way we can join and voxel merge everything together at once. So let's start thinking about this little tail. For me, I, I feel like it's flat and sort of has a cylindrical sides. So that's kind of what I'm feeling for the tail. So in order to do that, I think I'm going to need uh, three cylinders flattened out. So let's go here. Are these the feet? So these are the feeties. So I'm going to go ahead and validate that and just rename it. So we have the feeties there. We have the body. Everything is looking good so far. I can this is oh that was a that was a test body I think okay so for the spheres or for the uh, cylinders let's go ahead and add a cylinder we'll bring it down and we'll work with it down here so let's use snap and make sure it's on 90 so we'll, we'll turn it once that way it's 90 degrees uh, let's take it off edit because sometimes the edit points can get in the way, but we want to squeeze it together like this and we'll move it towards the back so you can sort of give in, get an idea as to what I'm thinking. So we'll make it smaller, kind of like this. So I think this is actually a pretty good size for it. It's not that big. The middle one, however, is a little more wide. So this might, might actually be pretty good. I think something like that. And just keep in mind, I'm not moving it left and right. I'm keeping it right in the center. So I think this is good. But before I validate it, I'm going to take this cylinder and clone it. And I'm, we can just hide that one for now. So let's go to this cylinder. I might actually do that, do this process again later. So we'll take this cylinder and validate it. We're on our gizmo. Let's do symmetry. 
And now we want to stretch it. So I have to make sure that I'm using the right, um, the right symmetry tool. I think I want the green instead of the red. So I just want to be able to move this. I guess that was the wrong one as well. Let's try the blue. There we go. So this is what I this is what I wanted to do with it. So I had to go to symmetry and just change it to Z. So now I'm going to use the arrow and I'm going to stretch this. Uh, and once it's done, once I feel like it's stretched enough, I'll just take it off symmetry and move it up. So maybe something like this. So to make our lives easier, we can actually take this one and instead of this cylinder, which is, I think it's just round. Yeah, so instead of that cylinder, which we can delete, we can take the one we just made and we can clone that. And we can actually add a mirror to it. So we have this one cylinder, let's add a mirror. So we added a mirror to this cylinder, so now it will react as though it's a mirror. Let's make sure that we're not on snap. Now let's turn these a little bit. So now that we have our mirror here, uh, let's go ahead and validate that. Join children. So let's make those two smaller. Let's do pivot, reset, pivot. That way the pivot is in the right place. Now let's bring these smaller. Maybe even a little smaller, something like that. But we still need them to, let's uh, tap symmetry. We still need them to be a little bit more uh, curved. So that part looks good. We just need this to be a little more curved. So let's voxel remesh. And the reason I'm voxel remeshing is because since these were a mirror, they sometimes don't act, don't move the right way. Um, but I find that once you voxel remesh them, they sort of act like they should after that point. So I do need to figure out the correct symmetry for these. So when we use move, that's kind of working the way that I want. The only thing that I don't like is I don't have that much control over how it's moving like up and down, which isn't that big of a deal, but you know, I like to have control over my sculpts. But I think this is pretty much like what I want. If I look on the side, it's still pretty even. So I'm pretty happy with that. But I think that's a pretty good uh, depiction of the drawing and we can probably try to balance this out a little bit. We'll use drag. We can maybe try to make this a little round, more round here. Like this. I think that looks good. Okay, so this is a little bit extra for me. Um, I'm always constantly going through and checking uh, the shapes and just making sure that they match up with the drawing. So the first thing uh, that I see is the body is a little, is a tad bit wide, so I'm just gonna shrink it a little bit there. Also, for this, oops, for this part of the tail, uh, this bottom part is a little wider at the bottom. So once I'm on that shape, I'll make sure I'm on the regular X uh, symmetry line. I'll take drag, make sure symmetry is on. And I'm just gonna puff this out a little bit so that the end is a little more broad. If that makes sense. So I think that looks better. Now the tail we have to, I wanna bend it so it's like, maybe we can just kind of fatten these up a little bit. So we'll fatten them up and then try to line them up exactly. So something like that is probably a little bit better. So they're lined up a little bit better. And now we'll go ahead and do my voxel merge. 
I'll do it at 250. Okay, I think that looks good. And the tail's a little big. I mean, I kind of, I kind of like it. Oh, did I not voxel merge them? Let me voxel merge them. I think I just merged. I think I just voxel merged one of them. Okay, there we go. So let's make the tail a little bit smaller. And bring it up a little bit. Since his tail is not that big. I think that looks good. Another thing I notice is there's a little more space here than I have given him. So I want to go to the head. I'll make my move brush and I just want to give him a little more real estate in the head around the eye. Maybe we'll pull this up too. Okay. I'm a stickler for details. All right, so the ears, they look pretty good. Um, maybe they can come a little bit up here in this. That looks good, but I want this to be, I want this to be a little more evenly in the middle. I like that. I think it looks good. Okay, very happy with him so far. So let's put a little bend in the tail because I don't want the tail to be straight down like this. So we'll just use our move brush and it can be fairly big. And first, before I do that, let's just stretch it out a little bit, make it a little thicker. So we'll go back to move and then we'll just push on it until we have a nice bend. I think that looks good. And then we'll just drag it back into position. And position is Essentially, I want it to look like, I want it to be coming almost like an S curve, coming off there and then curving out. Maybe it's a little bit better like this. Yeah, I think that, I think that pretty much works. And you can actually stretch it a little bit more. It'll give it a little bit more of a bend. And then you can reposition it. Yeah, I think that looks good. This looks good. Pretty much the same from the front. But then it has a nice curve in the back. Which is what I was looking for. So I think it's safe to merge the ears, the head, the body, and the tail. Uh, but if you, if you think you want to color these things differently after he's, um, like when we start painting, then you can leave, you don't have to merge all these. But I think the body, the tail, and the ears will all look better if they're merged together. And then we can start working on the face. Um, let's just rename this mirror to tail so we know what it is. So the tail is pretty big, it's 85K, so it's pretty big. But the body and the ears and everything are very low poly count. So I'm just gonna go to each thing that I wanna merge together and remesh at about 250. So the ears are remeshed, the head, I'm gonna remesh around the same, 250. The body, the same, around 250. So now everything is pretty much around uh, the same polygon count. So everything is a little more dense. So I notice that now when I go ears, tail, body, head, and I voxel merge, I'm gonna go even higher, like 450. So it looks like a little bit more of the detail is maintained. So I'll go back to the round brush. As I'm doing it, it looks a lot better so far. I think that looks great. So I'm still pretty happy with that. We have a little more definition in the tail. So I'm definitely happy with this. Um, I do want to still take the smooth brush and smooth out some of these areas. The neck, smooth that out some. The front where it goes into the ears, smooth that out some. And, and then especially this area, the eye area. So I want that to be nice and smooth and clean. Maybe under the tail. 
So I think this looks pretty good. And if you want to get some of this crisp uh, line back, you can use pinch. So we'll use pinch and we'll just kind of go around the edge. And it'll make that nice and give it a nice crease around the edge. Okay, I don't know why that looks kind of silly there. But that's okay. It's not too bad. And another extra thing you can do, you can use clay. Now let's say we just want to add a little something to the back of the tail. So it looks more like that there's, so it's not just a flap, there's like a little bit of, you know, kind of meat that goes into the tail. And now we can just smooth that out. And it just looks a little, little more natural, I think. Just make sure everything is nice and smooth. Okay, and now we're good to go. So now let's just use some spheres and add in our eyes. Let's we'll name this one uh, body. Okay, so we'll add some spheres. Bring those in. And just kind of position them roughly where they're gonna go. So something like this. So maybe something like this. I'm gonna clone these. So I think these look pretty good. I'm just going to validate them. And we'll name them eyes. So I'm gonna clone the eyes and I wanna name this one. Uh, we'll just hide this one for now and go back to the regular eyes. And now we just need to make this eye fit into this space a little bit better. So I'm gonna use move. And I'm just gonna stretch it out so that it fits perfectly in that space. I think that looks pretty good. And you can also adjust the head a little bit. So I feel like there's, I feel like there should be a little more space here. So I'm just adjusting it with the drag tool. Kind of goes up a little bit higher. I'll add a little bit to this. You want to make sure there's a nice arc on the top. It's very, very important to have that really nice arc on the top. And I'll go back to the eyes and move and just make sure that the shape is sort of just filled in nicely. So just like that, I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Okay, so while we're here, we can probably do the eyelashes. So we'll take tube, path, And it starts about here, so we'll start one here, we'll drag a little bit, and then another dot will pop up. We can take our pencil off, and then we can drag and repeat. So maybe about here, and then we'll make one off, like so. And I'm gonna double tap that so it's black. So that's like a harder edge. We'll press the green mirror it before I forget. So now we can change the radius. Uh, firstly, go to edit. Where's edit? There we go. And we can actually do spline. We might as well do spline now. So if you tap radius so that there's two lines here, you can adjust the first, the back. You can adjust that to make that nice and big. And then we'll make the front nice and small. And we'll hide this edge into the skin.
like this. So now we have that nice eyebrow there. Uh, we do have to get this off of the skin. So we just bring this out like that. I think that looks pretty good. Make it a little smaller. There we go. So now we can validate. I'll just use smooth and just kind of smooth the ends. Let's do symmetry. Smooth the ends a little bit. I also like to take flatten and um, doesn't need to be on symmetry. I like to flatten one side. So we kind of have that sort of shape going on. You can use drag and sort of use drag really small and then just sort of extend it. It's going to be black, so it doesn't have to be too, too perfect. But I think something like that works really well. Okay, so now we're going to do some really, really fun sculpting on the face um and this is part of this is just intuition and how i think it should look so right now if you look on the side it's pretty flat so i'm going to use clay and i'm going to build out this a little bit and that's actually going to build into his upper lip and then we'll smooth that out we'll use crease to make the mouth and then we'll use clay again to make a bottom lip we'll smooth that all out and then we'll use our tools to sort of shape it into a nice, cute little smile. So first we use clay. And we just want to start out this ridge where the smile is. It's not too low. It's right. It's like right under the bottom part of the eyes. So we'll start with something like this. You can make this a little bigger. And then we'll just sort of fill it out. And I'm not pressing very hard. So I'm just filling it out and I'm using that line as a stopping point. There you go. I'll give it a little something just so it sort of comes off like that. That's all we really are going for. We're not trying to do anything too crazy. Okay, so I think something like that works, and you can just try to make it as smooth as you can. See, I kind of like it to be nice, even, smooth going to the rest of the head and to the forehead. So something like this. So once you have that, just use your smooth tool and just smooth all this out. Very lightly, you don't have to press too hard. Just kind of smooth it all out. That's beautiful. And now we'll take crease, really, really small, intensity uh, way up, not at 100, but just pretty high. And now we can take our crease and we can start from that middle. That's why it's good to have that center line. So you can start there, come up, and then come down a little bit. Like that. So that's gonna be the little, his little smile. So we do need a bottom lip as well. So let's use clay, pretty small. And let's build in a bottom lip. Okay, so now we have the bottom lip. It's a little big, I might have to sh shrink it. But let's smooth all of this out. We have our shapes there, so let's just smooth this just like that. And then we can use crease again. Please excuse the children screaming in the background, or child, I should say. It's not my child. It's always hard to concentrate. So then I'm gonna bring this line out, whoops. We'll bring it out right in the crease and just kind of repeat that shape that we did that and this might be a little too I might have made it a little too aggressive I kind of want to be right below the marks I made yeah that feels that feels a little bit better to me uh, 
Something like that. It doesn't look happy enough, though. I want him to look happy. Here we go. That's a little bit better. That's much better. So I think that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to smooth out the sides a little bit. There is like, you know, an art to this. So that's why, you know, I'm not really afraid of like doing it a, a couple times because it doesn't always work right. Like it is, you have to kind of work at it and you kind of have to have a feel for, you know, what you're trying to do. I wish his lip was a little bit, let's see if I can use drag and just bring his bottom lip up a little bit. It's really small, I might be able to. It's tricky. It's tricky. You can also do things like this. You can make drag really small. And sometimes if you think he doesn't, doesn't look happy enough, you can sort of pull these in a little bit. You know, all these little tricks to sort of just get a little expression from them. I think that looks good. It actually looks happier than the, um, than the drawing. But I'm okay with that. All right, so the arms, let's go ahead and, did we voxel merge these together? I can't remember. I think we did. Can't tell if they're merged or joined, but we need to voxel merge them together. So let's voxel merge them at like 100. And then I'm gonna take my uh, round edge brush. I'll just go over them a little bit. You can just smooth them out manually as well. Little arms. I think look good. Okay, so we can just add some creases to these. It's kind of, it'd be kind of nice to do them when they're colored, but we can do some now. So we'll just go to crease and just add some in like that. Let's maybe do three. So we'll add one here and then one here. go and on the feet we can do the same thing maybe like maybe one here maybe another one here sort of like that and since i actually did it that way we might be able to flatten this part out a bit so let's take the flatten tool sorry i'm just kind of having fun now we'll take the flatten tool Let's flatten this out a bit. So we just want to flatten out the bottom of this. I actually really like this ridge here, so I'm not, I'm, I'm making sure not to get rid of that because I, I kind of like that little ridge. So this will kind of show us the underside of his little legs by flattening. So we'll flatten that out a little bit. We'll smooth it a little bit to make sure it's clean. And then we can take our pinch and we can actually double down on our work by just pinching this, this edge. We don't have to do it that much, but just enough so that the light catches it. So something like that. And if we really want to, we can add some round, uh, some round little toe beans. That might actually be kind of fun. So we'll just make some really small. We'll do the mirror. That's the best part about having the legs, the feet the same is you can just do the mirror. So to make these into toe beans, we need to flatten them out. We make them pretty small. Let's stretch them out a little bit. So now we have this shape to go off of, so we just need to position them in the right place. Which can be a little tricky, but you'll kind of get used to that. There we go.
And we just want to make sure that they're under the foot, not in the foot, but under the foot. There we go. Maybe even a little bit smaller. So this might take a lot of adjusting and you don't really have to do this part, but I just, you know me, I love, I love details. So I think something like this looks good. So let's clone it and let's drag another one here. And you can see I'm sort of going rogue and sometimes I use that brown point in the middle to just move the whole thing. But I wanna make sure that these are all, uh, let's take it off of world. I take it off of world, world keeps it in a certain way. But if I take it off of world, sometimes it makes it a little easier to rotate and things like that. Okay, so that's pretty, that's pretty good. Spin it a little bit. So we have one. Maybe we'll clone this. We'll bring this over. Let's see how easy this one is to maneuver. I really can't do like simple tutorials. They just all wind up being so complex. Well, I guess I can. I'm a, I'm a, I, did, I did do a series of very simple tutorials, but it is very difficult for me, I must admit. Let's make these ones a little bit smaller and make sure that they're sufficiently into the skin. They should just be coming off the, uh, the skin like this. There we go. That's like the perfect place where they should be. Okay, and we'll clone this last one and let's see if we can get another one in there. We don't really have to even show it all. It can just be like sort of implied. Okay, so now we'll just make another round one for the middle part. And again, we just want it right on the surface. There we go. We'll just slide it over like that. So now we have some toe beans. This is some little extras that I think are quite fun. Oh, and we do have to make those as well. So let me take a quick break and then I'll We'll come back and work on these things, and then we can work on the eyes. So we need to do these little things, the eyes, and then these little bits over here on the side. Save. All right, so we can actually, we can probably make one of these shapes and then just duplicate it to make these. So let's knock these out real quick. Do we have anything to label? Oh, these are the toe beans. So let's validate these, join children. We'll rename toe beans. Those are connected to the feeties, so I'm going to long press and connect that to the feeties. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's good so far. We could probably join them, join the the feet and the arms, but we can do that later. So let's add a. Do we want these to be cylinders or spheres? Um, I think, I think we'll just do cylinders. That might be a little bit easier. So we'll bring the cylinders out. We'll make them really small. So right about there, we'll stretch them. We'll validate and then we'll use our tools to kind of adjust them as we need. So that's actually pretty good. We don't really need symmetry because these are so small. So I'm just making this sort of shape that's sort of like a, sort of like a droplet kind of shape. It's 
So that's pretty decent. I feel like it can be flattened a little bit. And now I'll make move really big because I want to make a more of a bend in it. So I just want to push it. Just like that. That's pretty good. I'll take drag and just, oh, we don't want drag. Take move really small and just kind of puff out just so it's nice and round as well. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that shape. It's kind of what we're looking for. Maybe a little bit smaller. So let's use this to make these little bits above the eyes. So this one is good. While we're here, let's just clone these. So we have three of them. So I'll rotate it and make this one smaller. Like that. Clone. I'll do the same thing. I'll rotate it. Make this one a little smaller, maybe. So I think that's, I think that's right. So I'm going to take this one and let's see, what's the best way to do it? I'll clone it. I'll add it up here. Let's rename these to um, kind of like, they're not really whiskers, but let's just call them whiskers to make it easier. So then we have this sphere here. Let's move it up. And we need to make it a mirror. So let's tap on it. Mirror. There we go. So now let's... Oh. Let's make sure we go to the sphere. Now we can bring it in. Bring it up. Okay, so it looks like they're... Sort of like that. Stretch it a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's do the other one now. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to clone it. And we'll just kind of get it in the right spot. So it sort of looks like a little heart almost. Yeah, so it's sort of like that. I'll skinny it up a little bit. I think that's pretty much it. So let's take this whole mirror and let's just validate it. Join children. Uh, let's voxel remesh it. I think 200 is fine. This way they're together. We can do the rounded brush if we want. You can do the regular smooth. So something like that. I'm just going to use drag and okay. Pivot, reset, pivot. I do that so that the pivot point is in the middle and it's easier to kind of navigate. And I actually want to squeeze it, squeeze them together a little bit. Not together, but make them flat. And just lay this on the surface. Whoops. So let's tag symmetry so that we can sort of bend them. That's almost perfect. So we just want to lay them on the surface. Whatever you have to do to get it there, just get it on the surface. I think something like that is pretty good. They're a little big. And they're actually not in the right. They should be like this. So I probably should have done that first. Just turn them in the direct the way that they should go. Now you see how my pivot is wrong if I want to just bring them straight down? This is when I'll use world. Because now I can just bring them straight down. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So now I can just adjust them how I want them. Oh, I think that might be perfect. 
gonna try to make them a little smaller. Okay, I think that's good. I'm happy with that. Let's just make these smaller. So I'm gonna take these little whisker things, I'm gonna grab all of them. Validate, join children. And I wanna make them a little bit smaller. And then I'll tag symmetry and move them out from the face a little bit. I'm very, very detail oriented, as you can see. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So that's pretty much the hard, that, those, that's the hard part, pretty much. Um, I'm pretty happy. So let's get out of Metcap. Let's go to Lit PBR. Uh, I'm going to grab everything except for this hidden eyes. I'm going to grab everything else. And I always turn it white with roughness about halfway. I always think that's just a better, a better spot to light. Okay, so the eyes. Let's have some fun with the eyes. So let's turn these eyes into refraction. Uh, let's go to paint glossy absorption and then we'll go to this color and make that white looking good so far we and later on we might have to change the index of refraction uh, we most likely will have to change that so now we have these other eyes in here remember the eyes that we saved I'm gonna go ahead and connect those I'm gonna unhide it and these eyes I want to make small Forgot when you move it over, you have to use symmetry. So that looks pretty good, but you can see when you turn it, the index of refraction, you can see the issues and the edges of the eyes. I don't like that. So I will go back into, let's just make sure I'm touching the glossy part. And I want to change the index of refraction down. So that looks better. That's much better. And now I'll make the eyes a little bit bigger. So I'll go into here. I'll make the eyes a little bit bigger. And if you want to, you can stretch them out. And then you can sort of angle them how you like. So this is kind of more how they are in the in the drawing. Sort of like this. So for these, we can rename these pupils or P1 is what I like to call them. So we'll call that P1. And we can go ahead and paint that black. I like to paint it a glossy black. Although we might not need to paint it glossy because we have we already have this reflective layer above. So maybe we just won't paint it glossy. Maybe we'll just do black. We can switch it up later if we want. But I think that looks great. So that looks good. Now we just have to figure out what color we want for his body. Maybe like a beige. There's so many colors. This is definitely a difficult thing to choose. I'm thinking maybe beige. Doesn't need to be that rough. Maybe something like that to start with. 
let's cut the arms and the feeties and anything else. Yeah, let's paint those the same color for now. We'll take these and paint those matte black as usual. Maybe these are a light pink. Okay, and I like to make things like this similar to this color, but maybe a little bit either lighter or darker. We'll go lighter. I kind of like those white, but maybe we'll do just like a little bit of an off-white for those. And for the toe beans, let's do, maybe we'll match the color of the ear things. We can try that. Or we can do like a brown color. Something like that. So there are a few things that we should color on him. Um, and you can color him any way you want, but let's just have a little fun uh, before we finish the lighting. Um, let's go to the body and we'll add a layer. So now we'll go to paint and we'll, I just made it a lighter color, lighter than the skin. So maybe a color like that. And let's just make a little round bit here. Comes down like this. And then it goes onto his little tummy. Maybe something like this. That's kind of cute. I'm going to add a new layer. I white. Uh, and you, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't actually have to be white, but I'm going to use this for coloring in behind the eye. Now you can get in and get the details, but usually it actually looks pretty good even without getting too close. Like I think that looks fine. Okay. Yeah, I think it looks really good. All right, so you can put any designs you want on the back or anything as well. You can have some fun with it. You know, if you want to give them like a you can even get a, give them like an asymmetrical, like some little spots or something. You just want to have fun with it. And as for lighting, I'm going to keep that really, really simple um, for him. He looks pretty close to the this, so I'm going to get rid of the reference image. I go to lights, I turn off the environment, then I go add a light. Uh, and this is usually in a, a pretty good spot, to be honest with you. So I tap on this and I bring it up to maybe double. Like so. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to bring this light over here. Uh, it doesn't matter where the light is, but it's just so I kind of know I have it where the light is coming from. I'm going to name this one. So I add another light, I'll move it over here. It's the same, it's a world light, but I'm gonna spin it so that it's sort of hitting him from the side, the side that's not already lit. And I'm actually gonna lower this down some. I'm gonna go here to shadows and hit softness. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I want to add another light in the back. So we'll go here. Let's label this the one we just did too. I'm going to add another light and I'm going to name it, label it three. And this is the edge light. So I'm going to turn this to spotlight. I'll make it a little bit warmer too. So I'll move it back and over. 
And I kind of want this light to be shining on his back because this is gonna, just gonna be for a nice edge. So you kind of want it on the left, over on the, the side of him. Make it a little brighter. I don't, I'm gonna raise the intensity of it. Okay, so now when we look straight on, we have a nice edge light. So you'll have to play around with this because you can, obviously when you go like this, it changes. So the main thing is you want that nice bright light right on the edge. I think that's beautiful. Let's save this so we don't get any crashes. So now we have uh, room for one more light, which um, normally I would save it, but just for the heck of it, let's add it in. We'll label this one four. And we'll make it a spotlight. We'll make this one cooler. So we'll use a blue color. Let's bring it up here. Might even be nicer to do another edge light. From the other side. So I'll do the same thing. I'll sort of point it at the character. I'll raise the intensity. And just try to get that little kiss of light. Yeah, that looks good. Right on the back. I think it looks really nice. I'll raise the intensity a little bit more. There we go. So it's still pretty dark, but let's go ahead and turn on post-process. We'll tap him or her. Uh, so, so these options, I'm going to do the render resolution up because I always do. We have global illumination. I'll probably turn this up a little bit because I like to. Ambient occlusion. This is going to affect your light a lot and affect your shadows. So I'm going to turn this down some. Uh, curvature. I'll turn that down some too. Depth of field, near blur, I'm gonna turn down, but I'll leave far, even though it doesn't really matter um, because it's really just him. But I'll actually take a little bit off of far since we don't have any setting because we, we want him to be kind of clear. Or for now, we can just turn it off. Maybe that's better. Okay, so that's looking good. So we wanna lighten this scene up a little bit. So we'll go back to our environment this will also give these nice, beautiful lights here. Remember, I told you about my environment. We'll turn the exposure down until it's where we want it. Maybe something like here. All right, so the lighting is good. Um, I kind of positioned them a little bit in the center. And now I want to take it off orthographic and go to perspective. And I'm going to, I like the way it looks. Fully, so I'm bringing that down to 10. I'm going to add a view and I'll just name this one a uh, nice center view. You can feel free to change the background color to maybe something a little more fun or festive. I don't know what color he would like, this little creature would like. Maybe we'll just keep it like a nice warm. And I mean, that's pretty much it. I really am happy with it. So I'll save. All right, he's looking good. So the only thing is so of course this this character the size is it's actually really really big um because i'm just sculpting this character i'm not trying to you know uh, be conscious really about the polygons which is something that i've just started doing in the new class i, I really co concentrate on the sizes um and this one we can actually bring the sizes down so i'm going to put this in uh the the video where i am populating the room so this is a carryover from my the Kawaii workshop. I'm gonna add this character in, but to do that, I'm gonna have to 
bring down the size, bring down the sizes. So essentially, so if I do save as, if I save another one of these, um, the only thing that might I might have to change is this, uh, these paintings. But all of this, like the body, we can decimate. But you see that it does start to affect some of these, uh, some of the, the paintings, the paint job. So that's the only, that's the only issue there. But I would have to, um, there is a way that you can bake it. Uh, I'm still working on, uh, I haven't, I haven't really done it enough to where I can do a tutorial, but you can bake the colors on so you can actually have the low file size, the small file size, and still maintain the color. But the rest of these things that aren't uh, really attached, you can you can decimate just so they're not so so heavy. You know, maybe this part too. You know, things like that. The eyebrows, eyebrows are fairly small as it is. And you can sort of keep going, like even the pupils, P1 is 12.2K. You can decimate that twice, maybe. So things like that. There's lots of areas where you can decimate um, to get, get the character a little bit smaller. Decimate these. But all in all, I think it's pretty good. So I'm gonna call it quits. Oh, I need to color. I need to color in his little chin. There's always something. Always something. Let's just color this in real quick, and then we can call. Whoops. Paint. There we go. Sorry, little guy. <clears throat> oh, there's one. There is another thing. There is another thing. Sorry. So for the body. It's always good to play with subsurface and make it subsurface. So let's bring this down a bit. So it's not so see-through, but just a little see-through. So we make that subsurface, the legs, the arms and legs, where's the fees? Yeah, well, let's include the toe beans. We'll make those subsurface. We'll bring this down some. And even these, let's make this subsurface as well. We'll bring this down some. <clears throat> so that way, this side light, for example, which light is this side light? I think it's this light, the spotlight. You can turn that up really high. And we should be able to, let's make the body a little more, can't really see through it, but uh, it does make it, it does, uh, subsurface does make a big difference. Um, I'm not going to go back to the other one, but I love it. I think it's great. I'm very happy with the little character. I think he's very cute. I think he's great. All right. So that's it. Enjoy. Keep drawing. Keep sculpting. I'll see you all in the next video. Do a little turntable action. Back is bright. Back is too too bright.
Thank you so much for watching the video. If you want to learn more, check out my classes on Skillshare. I have 2D classes and 3D classes. If you want to see more, be sure to check me out on social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all Drug Free Day, and also Facebook. There's some really great Facebook resources for Nomad Sculpt and Procreate, including my own group, Procreate Tutorials and Guidance. As always, keep drawing, keep sculpting, and I'll see you all in the next video. And before I go, I just want to give a shout out to some of the people that have been supporting me forever. Shout out to Han. I appreciate you. Shout out to Murder Lab. I appreciate you. Kidult Klo. I appreciate you. They gave me this sweatshirt. I love it. Kidult Klo. A shout out to Artica. And shout out to Sketchboard Pro. I do all my work in my Sketchboard Pro. I didn't know I needed it until I got it. I love it. Uh, and also the Nomad Sculpt Facebook group. I love uh, that that group is really supportive and I find a lot of information on there. Shout out to Holger. He is a 3D artist and he thinks very differently than I do, which is exactly what I need because um, I like to sculpt like characters and I like to be very meticulous and very detailed, but the way that he thinks is much more efficient, which is something that I need to learn and I need to get better at. And if I'm learning and I'm getting better, then you're gonna learn and you're gonna get better. So just thank you to everyone in the Nomad community. Thank you to you guys, because if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here. So again, encore, keep drawing, keep sculpting, and I will see you all in the next video. Yeah. <laughs>